You know what? It's funny. Like, I don't, I don't want to play conspiracy theorist here, but it's almost like Kyrie, when he went out, the Nets played really well, right? And they were like nine and three without him. People were saying, including you, and I didn't think it was an insane thing to say because their chemistry was there that they were maybe better without him. Then, you know, he he remains out. They kind of go on the downturn. They end up, I think they finished like three and ten or three and eleven uh, without him. And it clearly was like they need they needed him. They they needed somebody like him. I think they needed more, more of that dynamic uh, the a dynamic playmaker type. And I wonder if he waited until like he was like you know what I'm not gonna come back when they're nine and three because then if I come back and we start losing games everyone's gonna blame me. I'm gonna come back after we go on this terrible losing streak and then I'm gonna be come, I'm gonna come back and everyone's gonna love me and I'm gonna be the savior and just making the playoffs will be an accomplishment for the Nets. Whereas the expectations before in that first like twelve game stretch when the Nets looked really good he there was that was a no-win situation for Kyrie. So I'm going to put my conspiracy theorist hat on and say Kyrie waited until the Nets went on a little bit of a slump downturn was like, now I can come back and be the savior and, and everyone's going to be like, oh, Kyrie, you're the best. We needed you. We love you, Kyrie. Why, why do we do that? I, I'm, doing the, I'm doing the exact <laughs> same thing you're doing, Saruti. Like, why, why don't we ever look at Kyrie with just the best of intent? Are there people out there that look at it like this? Kyrie was hurt and now he's healthy and now he's back playing. Like, are we the only ones that think that or do most people, is it 80, 20 that believe there's always like an ulterior motive for Kyrie Irving? Well, I, here's what I don't understand. It's like a week ago when we were asking the question, is he going to play again this year? Which I think was a legitimate question. It was because he said that he might need sh shoulder surgery. He wasn't ruling out shoulder surgery. And he was like, I don't even know why there's pain. Like there was all these weird, vague questions. Like it didn't seem like anyone knew what, what was wrong. And so that's why I'm going, I don't know, like maybe, maybe that, maybe this is a weird problem. Maybe it is. But then I think because of the vagueness, Scal, that sort of enabled him to play like a week later and have it be like, oh yeah, now I feel fine. It's okay. So I don't know. Sometimes I feel like with these teams and the medical staffs, like they are so vague with injuries and it's hard to tell like what, how serious injuries are and how long guys are actually going to be out because I don't think they want to tip their cap. They, they, and they, they don't want to ser certainly say, Hey, Kyrie's going to be out for two months because then that affects ticket sales and all that stuff. And plenty of teams do that. But there was so much vagueness around his injury that I think I don't think we have any other choice but to be conspiracy theorists. But it's not just his injury that makes us question. No, it's his it's his background yeah. exactly. It's, and it's, it's who the he all star is. comments before. Hey, if I if the fans really want to see me, I'm an all star type of player. So it's like all that stuff, which makes me just like I don't know. You know, I lived through it last year. I lived through it the last two seasons. Yeah, it's just it's really hard to listen to him and think like that he's like authentic and genuine for me, it's hard, but maybe other people buy all that stuff. And then, you know what? It's weird that we got that, that article from Jackie McMullen. It, it, she, he's always rubbing the uh, nets the wrong way. Won't take mm -hmm. his hat off, whatever, whatever she wrote. Photoshop, and Jackie McMullen yep. is not someone that just makes stuff up. She's obviously, she's a well-established artist. She's not doing this for clicks or anything like that. So, so with him, we, we always feel like there's something more than just what he usually says, which is, man, I just love this game of basketball. I just <laughs> want to play, you know, like no one believes anything he says. So I, 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 listen, I root in one sense, I want controversy for our show, but like the human being side of me, which is sometimes different than what we do here on this show. Well, I do root for people to be authentic and I just, for whatever reason, I just don't feel it with him. Yeah, I don't think, I mean, I think he, listen, I don't want to sit here and throw haymakers, but like, he just seems like fake. Like I, all, everything he's, everything that comes out of his mouth, like I just, I'm like, all right, Kyrie, here we go. Here we go again. The Instagram post, the conspiracy theorists, all this stuff. And it's a shame because I think when, when Kyrie, like Kyrie is aesthetically mo one of the most pleasing players in the NBA to watch. He, he might oh, have the best handle. He might have the, the best handle of all time. Like the guy is a magician when it comes to dribbling in tight spaces and moves and all like the stuff that you kind of that like fans and YouTube people and like Twitter love. Like he's everything that 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 they love. And I think he's a little bit of a I think he's a little bit of a front runner in a way that like when things are going well, he's going well. Things are going well and things aren't going bad. I'm not sure he's a guy that you can lean on to get you out of that rut. So he, in, in a lot of ways, Kyrie is just like is 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 basketball personified in in 2019 2020, right? He's just He's flashy. He's, uh, he, he, you know, but but he, but but when push comes to shove, I'm not sure he's like the guy that's going to be a leader on your team and get you through thick and thin. He's just really fun to watch when things are going well. So, I, I don't know. Like I, but he has I, won. I that's the thing. That's well, all messed well, up. With the, I know, I know. I'm with you. The LeBron thing, right? But LeBron yeah. had 
I mean, he won with Kyrie, and outside of that, whoever else came through there was not good enough. You have to admit that. He didn't, like, he didn't win with Isaiah Thomas. He didn't win with uh, George Hill. Yeah, that, he, that, didn't, that. he didn't win with anybody else. And he won with Kyrie. And Kyrie, on paper, he made the shot. I mean, he's yeah. the one that no one could score. Steph couldn't score. Clay couldn't score. LeBron couldn't score. Iguodala, no one could score. No one. Kevin Love, Kyrie Irving is the one that scored. So I agree with you, Saruti. I can't say, like, man, that's that's the fox. That's the guy I won the foxhole in the NBA Finals. Like, if he never made that shot, I would never think that. But that yeah. shot, it, it's, it's just such a big moment when everything was going bad that it just, like, it like spins the real narrative of all the other stuff and all the stuff that he says and the flashiness and if not working hard on defense, it spins it enough because of that series right there. And, you know, like, listen, if LeBron made the shot, LeBron won that game for the Cavs, the conversation would be so different than if Kyrie Irving made that shot. And there's no doubt he's talented, mm -hmm. no doubt. But like, I, I think that's, like that almost like spins the narrative in that direction that people love him for that, even though all the other stuff seems to be the more reality of Kyrie. All right. Well, I mean, this might sound insane, but like, I think, I don't think anybody's joking or, or is confused about like that final series. Like that was the brawn. And yes, Kyrie deserves credit for hitting that shot, but Every other, basically in every other instance, whether it was the four years before LeBron got there, just perennial losing season. Now, a lot of that is like, it was a bad Cavaliers organization. It wasn't that great of a team, but, you know, they didn't really win any games when he was there. He goes to Boston, which is perceived as a great situation. I think it is one, and things don't go well there. And, you know, who knows what's going to happen in Brooklyn. But, like, I feel like, man, that shot, he's living off of that shot. And oh, listen, I'm giving, yeah, him, for sure. I'm giving him credit for it. Like, I'm not signed, I'm not trying to take credit away. It was an unbelievable shot. And you're right, like, under the circumstances, nobody was scoring and he hits the big shot. But, like, what's the difference between, like, Kyrie, who, you know, is a really flashy player, but when, is, when has been on his own, hasn't really done a ton, and a guy like Devin Booker, who, like, puts up a bunch of numbers, is really flashy, but, you know, he's on a bad team and they don't win anything. Like, that was what Kyrie was before LeBron got to Cleveland. Yeah, why do I feel like it's different? I well, nah. He Kyrie's better than Devin Booker. He's better than Trey Young. He's better than like all those guys that put up numbers. But here's a good one because you know how much I love Brad Beal, right? Like if Brad Beal was on the Cavs with LeBron, like I'm not sure they wouldn't have won. Like Brad Beal probably would have won, right? Like am I, I agree. am totally. I like? So, I so is, is it <laughs> what is it about Brad Beal that we like and we would say? Like if Devin Booker was there or Trey Young was there or whoever, like Brad Beal is legit. Like he's a winner. So I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't have actually a reason why, Saruti, that I would say this guy yes and that guy no. And listen, I could be wrong. Like it, that, that's true. But I just feel like if Brad Beal was on the Cavs and he played with LeBron on that team, like they also could have beat the Warriors with the same circumstances that happened. Like Brad Beal could get you 40 with LeBron mm -hmm. on the team in game five, right? Or game six. Was it game five? Game five. I think it was game five. He dropped yeah. 40. No Draymond Green, right? I, I could see Brad Beal being that guy, and Brad Beal's team is losing. So, I, you know, like, I don't know what separates that, but I do put Kyrie in the category of Brad Beal. Like, like yeah, there could be a lot of guys in that category that would win with LeBron, but, but there's a lot of guys that are flashy that would not win. I don't put them in the same category as Devin Booker. Okay, I think I think that, I mean I'm I'm just trying to be like I'm being a little tongue in cheek, but I you know and sure, I'm not sure. even a huge Devin Booker guy and you know our guy our guy Ryan McDonough you know obviously the guy that drafted him and is like I, I like Devin Booker I don't I think if you know oh, man if I'm saying I could have one or the other like Kyrie's definitely to me more talented I just worry about the other stuff with him but you're 100 percent right Bradley Beal I, in fact I think Bradley Beal probably fits better on that Cavs team because he doesn't need the ball maybe as much as Kyrie does like he can he's uh he's he's not quite Clay Thompson in that way but he could do a lot of his work like off the ball and just spot up shooting and being a threat that way whereas I think Kyrie like that was always kind of a little bit of a weird fit it was like hey all right LeBron here's the, here's the ball Kyrie do your thing and then I'm you know I'm LeBron I'm gonna do my thing it was like a take turn tag team type thing whereas I think Brad would it be a little bit more of a fit as a two off guard ball? And but yeah, I'm I, I'm with you. I think Beal is just as good as up there with with Kyrie. But unfortunately, he hasn't been in a situation where he can hit a big shot like that because he hasn't played with a guy like LeBron in his career. So 
I don't know. I think the, the Kyrie thing is confusing to me because, I, again, I'm not trying to knock the guy. And it may, maybe it sounds like I am, but he is living off of the, sh- the perception and, and, and the, you know, the spoils of that shot because he did make it and it was huge. But I also yeah, but it's not like, like he's Robert Ory, over. No, it's not no, like, no, 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 yeah, no, no. Yeah, yeah. Of course yeah, he not. He did work. Like, he did work in the NBA final. He cooked Steph Curry. Mm-hmm. We have to he, – he, he held his own. He cooked Curry in the finals. There's no doubt about that. And he made the shot over Curry in the final. So it's not like a, it's not, I don't, we shouldn't disrespect it. Like it wasn't like, that's all he did. Like the dude is a beast. No, but it's like, I feel like that's like, whenever there's criticism of, of Kyrie as a winner, it's always like, well, he made the shot. And you're like, yeah, no, I know, yeah. I know, I know. But like, that's it. Like, and it's, it's a big moment. That's, but, but that's, but, but I don't know, but I, he, he's still, I'm, I'm still sort of confused as to who he is. And that's what's going to be so interesting next year is like, okay, well, he's going to be, be, be playing again with a player that's better with better than him in Kevin Durant. Now we'll have to see how Kevin Durant looks when he comes back, obviously, but it'll be a similar st- situation to what was what he had in the Cavs for those couple of years with LeBron. And is he maybe better suited in that role like he was with LeBron in those couple of years, and which ended up winning, uh, you know, get, getting a title for LeBron and himself in Cleveland? So I don't know. It's I, I'm not trying to be a Kyrie hater. I just I'm just I think more than anything, I'm just I'm just confused about him. I'm just confused. I don't know what to think, and I do think he's a little bit of a flashy type player. And I don't know how much substance there is when it's like, and, I, and and that's why we bring up the conspiracy thing of like, I do think that they're in the back of his mind. He's going, I don't want to come back to this team when they're playing really well because that's going to look bad on me. 